All right, so we are in unit three now. So key concept three, geometric properties and statements of logic. This is day one. So we're continuing on with the geometry. This is a bit different than you might um, be expecting, though. So learning goals. I can understand what the transitive property is and how it is used in geometry. Understand what the reflexive property is and how it is used in geometry. And comprehend and draw conclusions from statements of logic and conditional statements. Seems like a lot. It's not terrible, though. So transitive properties. The transitive property, now there's two different types. There's same, and um, you'll see the other one in a second. So transitive property same says if angles or segments are congruent to the same angle or segment, then they are congruent to each other. And you'll see example of that in a second. Transitive property different states if angles or segments are congruent to congruent angles or segments, then they are congruent to each other. And while that may seem like pretty confusing it'll make sense here very quickly so like here we would want to name the property of equality or congruence that justifies going from the first statement to the last statement so you got to look at the first statement then you have to look at the last statement so if you look at this first statement we've got a B congruent to or equal to CD and CD equal to EF and we're assuming then that a B and EF are equal so if you have one segment or angle that is congruent to two different ones then we would say that that's transitive same all right now moving on if we have if ab is equal to cd cd is equal to ef and ef is equal to gh then ab is equal to gh so basically what we did is we took and we added one and if you look here's one pair here's another pair so we have ab and gh a, B, and G, H. So basically, if you have one pair, then whatever isn't paired is equal or congruent. If you have two pairs, again, whatever isn't paired is equal or congruent. So this is transitive different. Okay, pretty simple. All right, so now when we're talking about reflexive properties, so that's when an angle or side is shared by two figures, we can say that it's congruent to itself. So this property is the reflexive property. So make sure you know that along with transitive property. So like for example, if we're given the diagram below, you could say that CK, so it's basically going that way, is equal to or congruent to KC. Okay, so it's basic, it is, not basically, it is the same two letters just flipped and they don't even necessarily have to be flipped. But, um, if you have the same two letters and we're saying that they're equal or congruent to themselves, then that is the reflexive property. So if we were at, if we were given this problem right here without any of this, and they asked you what the property was, this would be the reflexive property. Now, conditional statements, this is where it might get a little confusing, but it will make sense if you just try and think logically. So a conditional statement has two parts, a hypothesis, and a conclusion. Hypothesis is always going to come first. So conditional statements are usually written in if-then form. The part that immediately follows the if is the hypothesis, and what the part that immediately follows the then is the conclusion. So sometimes we could, you'll see it written like this, and this basically means if P, then Q. So if you see this, that's what that means. So we want to determine if the conditional statement is true or false. So if you eat a pint of ice cream, then you won't be hungry. Does that make sense? Sure, yeah, it absolutely makes sense. Uh, unless you are really, really hungry and a pint's not enough. Now, if you live in California, then you live in Los Angeles. Well, the question you need to ask yourself here is, is Los Angeles the only place that you can live in California? The answer is no. So if a number, now this one's a little bit trickier. Again, you have to kind of like think. If a number is divisible by three, then it is an odd number. Well, nine is divisible by three, right? That equals three, that's an odd number. But six is also divisible by three. Six is an even number. So that one would also be false. All right, and then kind of taking that a step further, what conclusion can you make from the following statements? So if you have these two statements, if two numbers are even, then their sum is even. If the sum of two numbers is even, 
then the sum is divisible by two. So basically we're saying this, and this is where you're gonna kind of use the transitive property, because we have if P, and this is where kind of what I did earlier. So we let's call this P, all right? And we'll call this Q. And since this is the same of as this, we'll call that Q, and we'll call that R. So remember how I said we could write if two numbers are even, or like an if then statement, we could say if P, then Q, and then we have if Q, then R. Now this is kind of where the transitive property comes into play. Notice we have two Qs here. So we can jump from here to here. And that's assuming that these statements are true. So if two numbers are even, then their sum is even. That's true. Okay, if the sum of two numbers is even, then the sum is divisible by two. So we need to ask ourselves, is this, if we have this, can we say this? So if we have two numbers that are even, okay, we know that when we add them together, we get an even number, and we know that it's divisible by two. So that would be true. And we would write it, if two numbers are even, then their sum is divisible by two. And now if you look, I did this little shortcut up here. Is this necessary? No, but I find this helpful. So we have this one statement here. If two numbers are even, that was what I called P, okay? R wasn't this, R was this. Then the sum is divisible by two. So no, notice how I took this part out because I jumped from this to this. So I said, if two numbers are even, that's right there. Then their sum is divisible by two, that part's right there. So you're kind of using the transitive property to draw a conclusion from two statements. All right, so what you need to do here is you just need to trust yourself and see if it actually makes sense. Um, if you're not sure, try and come up with counterexamples that are um, true, see if it's true or false. So like the, you know, if you live in California, then you live in Los Angeles, um, is that true or false? Okay, you can come up with a counterexample. Well, if you live in California, you could also live in you know San Diego or San Francisco the other thing you can do is flip it around say so like if you live in LA then you live in California now that is true okay so that's something to consider just saying if, if the counterexample is true then chances are that you know if you flip it around and it's true chances are if you flip it back around it will be false not always but in what you're going to see it's most likely so and then just remember when you're trying to figure out the difference between reflexive and transitive reflexive is basically what it sounds like it's going to be congruent to itself all right guys that is it have a good one look for the this video um tonight for the next one